What's going on guys? Hope you're all having a great day today. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a user login site. Uh, it'll allow users to sign up, log in, it's going to store it in a database. I'm going to go over all the fun stuff and then once we create the actual login functionality, I'm going to make a, uh, a separate page that only logged in users can see. And I'm going to show you guys how to set all that up in today's video. Now, how we're going to make this work is we're going to be using Python on the back end, and we're going to be using Flask uh, to connect our HTML and CSS to our Python on the back end. And so I'm going to be using this template that I found online, but if you guys want to just go to HTML login template, there's a bunch of different templates, uh, and I'm going to show you guys how to set up. Or you can make your own template. You can use Bootstrap. Uh, you just go to bootstrap.com and there's and you can kind of make your own login. But who wants to do that? We're using this template. Um, okay, so starting off, we're going to be in VS Code. That's the IDE I'm going to use, but you, you guys can use any other IDE you want to use. Um, and so I have already created a folder that we're going to start with. And I'm going to make an app.py. And I'm also going to make a folder called templates and another folder called repositories. Now let's start by opening a new terminal and we're going to make a uh, virtual environment to work in. So to do that, you're going to want to type Python dash M V E and V V E and V. Now, obviously first and foremost, you need to have Python installed. So make sure you guys look up Python and install Python. Now, once we've created our virtual environment, you'll see it's right over here, V E and V. Now to go into the virtual environment, you're gonna type source V E and V scripts activate so now we see we are in our virtual environment and I'm gonna go down here and then I'm gonna click on that and so now we are in our virtual environment so we're gonna start first by going pip install flask And you guys can look up um, on Google Flask starter code. I always copy this little starter snippet. Now with that starter code, you'll paste it in the app.py. But there are some things you need to alter. So we're going to also import render template. And here, get rid of hello world, and instead we're going to put return render template index.html. And also while we're at it, we're going to add app.secretkey and just put whatever you want here for the time being. Um, now we're going to import our uh, login template that we downloaded. Okay, so here's the zip file that it gave us. And these are the files. I'm going to copy these two HTML files. I'm going to go and paste those there. And we see they're now populated in our VS code. And now we are going to actually make a new folder. Just make it right here called static and all these files here you're going to copy and paste them in static 
So there we are. So now in our index.html, this is the sign in that you guys saw at the beginning of the video. Right now to run this, you're going to type flask run. And this is what we're going to get. This is because we haven't connected the CSS yet. Now to connect the CSS, you're going to find CSS slash style dot CSS. Any template you download should have something like this or something very similar. And the reason it's not working is because we put it all in a static folder. So all you have to do is add static slash. And now let's reset it. And I'm going to add dash dash debug at the end and that way we won't have to close the terminal each time and there we go so this is the sign in currently nothing works um forgot password none of this works right but at least now it looks pretty and now we can move on to adding functionality and just for reference, the reason we got that page when we ran flask run is because this little function here, it, it routes us to the index.html, which is where all of the login code is. And I'm actually going to change this to just say index. All right, so now what we want to do in our index.html is we're going to alter this so the HTML and Python will talk to each other, meaning when a user types in a username and password and clicks the login, we will get that information on the back end and it will be able to store it in a database. So first off, we're gonna find the form tag. That's the starter form tag and that's the end, but you wanna find this block and in the form tag, there should be an action element. If there isn't one, you can add one. And we're going to add a way to route to our function in Python. So we're going to type URL, whoops, URL4. Uh, just call it sign up. Save that. And we're going to give it a method post. And a post method just means anytime you are grabbing um, a sensitive info, passwords, um, anything like that, post, a post method will hide that info. Otherwise, it will show in the search bar whenever it's submitted. So it has to be a post method. You have to add this or it won't work. Now in our app.py, we're going to make a sign up function. So we'll change this to sign up. Whoops, not capitalized. And slash sign up. And we're going to do name equals, um, actually for that, go up here and import request. And now name equals request dot form. And we're going to call it username and get their password request dot form password. And now we're going to print those items just to make sure that it does work. Okay. Now, before we run that, we need to go into our index.html again. And this is the username and the password div tags so in the div see so this is the username in the input you need to put name equals 
username and same for password name equals password and whatever this is so username and password they need to reflect the same here username and password so now assuming i did this right let's reset let's reset this All right, let's see what we did wrong. Okay, uh, okay, it's because we did make this post method. So instead of app.route, it should be app.post. So the reason this didn't work is you see on the HTML side, it was doing a post method, because that's how we set it up. Uh, but on this side, it was a get method. So now that we change it to a post method, it should work just fine. Now let's refresh, testing and testing. Okay. And so there we go, testing and testing. So now we're getting the data on the back end. So now we can remove these because we can have confirmed that they in fact do work. So now what we need to do is we need a way to store the information. Um, so let's make a database. Let's start by making a .env file. Um, and in the repositories, we are going to make a new file as well. That's not what I wanted. The new file is going to be called db.py, and the other file, let's call db.repo.py. Now for db.py, we want to import OS. We also want to import scikit-g. Scikit-g pool import um hold on let me import psychob g before i do all this pip install cop g pool and while we're at it pip install psychob g binary We'll need that for later. Okay, now connection pool. Now set pool equal to none. Now we're gonna make a get pool function. Whoops. And now we're going to make a way to connect to the database. Whoops. Okay, now let's see. Oh, whoops. There we go. Um, so we're making a database connection. This database URL that we just set was going to go in our .env. Just leave that like that for now. Oh, and at the end... We're going to return pool. So 
So now we might as well go set up the database. Um, what you guys will need to do is install data grip. Um, if you guys have an EDU account, it is free for students, but otherwise uh, it does cost money to use this. Um, but it's just what I use. It's what I was taught to use in my computer science classes by my professor so that's just what I use and then I use PostgreSQL um, and when you install this it's going to ask you for a password now make sure you remember this password because you will be connecting it through data grip as well and I'll show you how we do that um, but just make sure whenever you install Postgres the password it asks for remember that password all right, now once you have all that installed, open uh, Data Grip. And you're going to click the plus, add a new data source, make it PostgreSQL. Uh, the user I'm going to set to Postgres. The password is going to be the password you set when you were installing Postgres. So make sure you put that or it's not going to work. And to test the connection, so the connection's good. We're gonna okay. Now make sure after you make that. Um, okay, never mind. Hold on, never mind. Uh, so we're gonna create database. Uh, we're gonna call it. I'm just gonna call it users. I don't know. And now what I was saying before. Uh, once you create that, go over and click. And make sure you're in the right schema. So now let's make a table. So create table if or no create table users. Now in our user table we want the name. Well ID first. We're gonna make it serial and primary key. We're going to get their name, make it a var car, 255, and not null. And let's get their password. Make that also a var car, and also not null. Now, just for reference, for pretty much all. Um, Postgres or MySQL tables, you want an ID because that's just the easiest way to track the users or the food or the whatever your table is doing. In our case, it's users. And serial just means it's going to increment each time a new entry is added to the database or the, to the table. Um, so this you can pretty much just ignore. Um, the stuff we'll be adding will be name and password. So let's insert some test data. Insert into users, name, password, or the values. Name is the Candelia, and we'll make the password ABC123. Oh, I forgot to make the table. Okay, table's created. Now that is there, so now when we do select all from users, we will see the name and their password and their ID. So now that we have the database created, we need to connect it to our VS Code project. Now back in our VS Code project, this is what the link is going to look like, except the password here. You're going to put your actual password from, um, like when you were installing Postgres, that password you made, that's the password you're going to be putting here. And then also, instead of Postgres, I called my project Um, users.
So this is what my full URL looks like here, and yours should look very similar. Now in our DB repo, we need to add, um, so we've already connected to the database, right? This is our connection and it gets the URL here for the connection. But now for us to um, send or receive data to the database, we have to add some functions in the DB repo. So we wanna start by connecting repositories.db um, import get pull and now we also need to import a way to hash the passwords generate password hash and also check password hash now I'd already previously set this video up so I have a pre-coded function that I did earlier. Um, I'm going to explain it. This will save me a lot of time. Um, so we make a sign up user function and we're passing the username and the password. This is us getting a connection. We're connecting to the database over here and now we're giving a, a, a query. So an SQL query where we're selecting the ID from the user where their username is whatever we pass into this. And it first checks if the username already exists. If it does exist, it'll just return a username already exists. If it doesn't, it'll put the password into um, this function here and it'll hash the password, meaning it'll hide the password. So if someone hacks your database, they won't get all of your user's passwords. And then it's going to insert the name and the hashed password into the database and then return registration successful. Please log in. So now obviously save that like I just did. And now we're going to um, create a connection here. So I actually need to import this from repositories import um, db repo so now this will be db repo dot sign up user and we're going to pass the username and the password or actually i just have a name so let's set it name and password so now let's try that. Um, but before we do that, let's set this main.html. It's just opened on my other screen. So now let's go um, new user one and the same new user one let's see if that works doesn't normally take this long so let's see what's going on okay ba -ba -ba. um i think the connection might or the connection problem might be that we didn't import or install python.env so let's try that again new user one new user one okay so i think that worked So let's go back to our database. Okay, and there we go. So new user one, and then their hashed password was saved. Okay, so now that the login works, we want to change this slightly. We're going to import redirect and also URL for 
and we are going to copy this function and just make it slash home and then make this main dot html and now remove this and instead put redirect url for home so let's test that first off let's just put slash home so that works and so if we do a new user whoops then okay so made a new user and then routed us to the home page now i want to make it so this home page is only accessible by people who are logged in but currently anyone can do slash home and get to the home page so I'm going to show you guys how to alter that. Well, first off, we want to make a logout function. So the home page that I make, I'm just going to, or the home page from the template, I mean, I'm just going to alter this do slash logout. Then the app.py, I'm going to do a logout function. So we're going to go app dot route slash logout oops logout and now I'm going to show you guys how this works in just a second Oh, whoops. Um, let's just route them to the home page. So first off, we're also going to import session. And what session does is once someone logs in, um, it'll make a session. And it'll have its own unique session key. And so when someone logs out, it'll pop the session key out of the list, AKA meaning they've logged out. Um, and so let's try this. I believe I already altered slash log out. Yep, yep, okay. So let's make another new user, 13. And log out, did not return a valid response. So let's see what we did wrong. Uh, that's because I put that in the wrong place. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. So yeah, I had that in the wrong place. Uh, now if you go back here and still just do slash home you still can just bypass uh, logging in which we want to change so to fix that uh, we want to go into the home function here and we're going to do a name variable and or hold on before we do that let me think uh, sign up so here we want to set session ID, not ID yet, name equal to name. Or wait, uh, no, hold on, we're not doing that yet. This is the sign up function. So we're going to get the session. Actually, before we do all of the sessions and preventing people from going to the home page, let's do um, a login because right now. 
we do a sign up and the sign up just immediately logs us in. Well, let's sign up and then let's allow users to log in. So we're going to come over here and let's just make a new file and call it login.html. And we're going to go to the index and just copy everything and just alter this slightly. Log in. Um, let's see. Oh, I already had this as, so let's see, log in. So then this needs to be sign up and copy this here. Instead of home, we're going to do log in. We're also going to set this to log in, and now we're going to route it to login.html. And now the index, we're going to do slash login here. And in the login, we're going to do just the plain slash. And we're doing, again, just the plain slash because that's the route here. It's just a plain slash. So... Let's test this. So I already have an account log in. I need to change this to sign up, but you get the picture. So now it changes. So that works. Let's change this. Sign up. So now when they sign up, we now need to redirect to the login page. So now they can log in with their new credentials. So let's test this really quick. A new user with two R's because we're really cool. So we create an account, and now once it's created, it takes us to the login page. Okay. And now from here, we want to be able to fetch the data. So we're going to go into our DB repo. And again, I already have the function saved because I don't want to type it all out, but I'll explain it. To you guys so we have a login function where again we're getting the username and the password this is just us connecting to the database and now we have a query where we select all from the users where their name equals the name that they passed in through our login form and this just means it's going to select all so it's going to get their id it's going to get their username and their password now, assuming they do have a login already, it's going to save all of the data to the user record. And so if the user record does exist, it's going to save the ID here, the name here, and the hashed password here. And now this function, we're checking if the password hash is the same as the regular password. And so to do this, you pass the hashed password and then the actual user's password. And if they come up to be the same, it'll pass true and it'll return their ID and their name. Otherwise, false, and it'll show invalid username or password. So that's how the function is going to work. So back here, we are just going to do the exact same thing here. Except instead of sign up user, it's going to be login user. And we actually are going to alter this slightly. Um, let's see. So, what we just did here is the same way true. ID and name. 
this is how it'll work. This will be true, this is the ID, and this is the name. That's how that works, that's why there's three. If you were to go here and remove the name, so it's just true and ID, you would go over here and remove the name, so then it's just true and ID. But I want to keep the name, so we're going to put that back. And we're going to put that back as well. So now, what I was doing before is we'll make, once they log in, we're going to make a new session. And we're going to set their ID, their account ID, to the session ID. And now we're also going to set their name. Whoops, not what I wanted. equal to the name that they set. Uh, this you don't really need. I just passed it just to pass it. In fact, for kicks and giggles, we can just get rid of it. And again, the same over here. Let's get rid of it. Return their ID and the name. Because you don't really need it. I don't use it. So now... To make it even more fun, we can go welcome to the home page. And we're going to pass name. And now what this does is we are creating the page um, to be dynamic to where anyone that logs in, their name is going to be displayed here. Um, you can do the same with if you're making, let's say, a database for food items um, and you have, say, 20 different food items, you can do the same with, but with a for loop. And that for loop would look something like this. So you would go for items in food and then you would put, like, say, items here and it would loop through and put all the items uh, vertically under each other or you can change it to be horizontally but if you guys want me to cover that more in a different video I can do that but that's kind of how you do it that's not exactly how I do it that's just kind of how you do it um, so now let's test this I got a little off track there let's go back just to the main page And make a username, the Candelia, and the Candelia, and we have a problem. What is our problem? So, okay, so the problem I was having was this was app.route instead of app.post. Um, and also, one thing I didn't catch before is if any of you guys are following along, I had that set like that. It actually needs to be like that, so make sure you fix that accordingly and so now we are getting another issue but we're gonna go through it why we're getting this issue so we're gonna go test and test one sign up and so we're getting method not allowed and this is because we've changed the login to be post and it's trying to do a get method um, which means we need to change this around slightly so I'm going to copy this. I'm going to set this to like login page. And same here, login page. And now we're going to render the login.html. And so instead Instead of URL for login, it's going to be URL for login page. And also, I don't remember if I covered this or not, but make sure you change the sign up to login because I had copy pasted this. And so it said sign up and make sure this says a login. So that way it'll be connecting here. I'm going to pick up where I was before. Welcome to the homepage name. We've created this to be dynamic. I believe I covered this before when I added this. 
Um, so we want to display the person's name on the page. And to do that, um, let's see, we want to, we so we save their name and their ID in the session. This is how we're going to now display their name, display their name on the home page, because we're going to pull from the session. Now in the home function, we're going to do another name variable, and we're going to get the session dot get name and then also we can just set this to none but we want so like I mentioned before we want the home page to be only accessible to people who have logged in and we don't want anyone who hasn't logged in to not be able to access the home page so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an if statement if the name equals none we are going to instead of routing them to the home page we are going to route them back to the login page um let's do a redirect redirect url4 and let's do index So now, uh, and also, we will set name equal to name. And this right here is how we're connecting this name to the name here. So for instance, for instance, if I just change this to user, yeah, whatever, username, this would have to be now username because this name is what this is here. For instance, if I were to change this, it's now not going it's not able to find it, so that's why there's an error. So that's how you know this name is here and this username is what connects right here. So now let's try this. Let's see if this does work or if I messed up somewhere. Let's start from the very beginning. Let's do a whole new login. Um, the Candelia 2024. And now we log in. And now welcome to the homepage Candelia 2024. Um, and so now say we log out now let's try going slash home and we can't anymore because we're no longer logged in so now we have some security or i guess permissions in place to where only people who are logged in can view the home page um so there's a lot of things you can do with this to alter this um but this is pretty much all I wanted to show you guys, I think. I um, feel like I'm missing something. Now, I'm just doing some uh, error handling earlier in the video. If you guys remember, in our DB repo, I came here and I got rid of true here. Now, a, a problem I just found out about is say you insert incorrect data will you get this value error, too many values to unpack? That's because it's expecting two, because over here we only gave it two values to look for, it's not what I wanted, but here we're giving it three values. So what we're just gonna go ahead and do is I actually now just wanna keep this to be true. So I'm sorry, I'm going back on what I said, I'm setting out to true. And I'm going to do log in again. Because now what we can do is if login equals false, we will redirect 
the user to index. Otherwise, so else we will session, session, and return them to the home page. So let's test that. So say incorrect, log in. Okay, so it was incorrect. And so it routed us to the signup page because our credentials were incorrect. Now we could just route us back to the login because you know, usually if someone accidentally inputs the wrong uh, login, it doesn't route them back to the signup page. So let's actually just route us back to the login page. And that should be fixed accordingly. Yep, so back to login. All right, so I think that will do it for this video. I don't think I missed anything. Um, I did all the error checking. Um, you know, we set up the database. If there's anything else you guys want me to go over, um, I can show you guys how to connect Google Authentication to where, you know, in most applications you can sign up with Google. I can show you guys how to do that. Where you add like a little button down here, log in with Google. I can show you guys how to set up forgot password. Um, I can show you guys pretty much anything. Just let me know down in the comments what you guys want to see. If you guys did get a little confused from this video, I did have a basic structure of how I was going to do it, but I did go a little off. We did have a couple errors, and so I was trying to figure that out. So if you guys did get it all confused, please let me know in the comments, um, and I will connect with you, and we can figure that out, and I can help you guys fix whatever errors or confusion you have. Uh, but that's been it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.